Welcome to our lecture online. Now, just like we did for the Coulomb force, let's represent the electric field in vector format for a chart somewhere in space. So let's say we have a chart somewhere in space called Q at a distance r sub a from the origin. Now we have a point in space and the distance or the direction and the direction to that point is defined by this vector r sub b. And notice we will now have an electric field at that point. If we want to know what the electric field is, we know it's going to emanate away from the positive charge. So along this line, in the same direction as the vector that represents the distance and direction from the charge to the point in space where we want to know the electric field. So we call that the R vector. But how do we define that R vector? Because essentially, we want to know the electric field there in reference to this point charge right there. Notice this point charge is located at r sub a, and this point in space is located at r sub b. It then turns out that the vector r is simply the difference between r sub b minus r sub a. And if you're not sure how to visualize that, one thing you can do is you can say, well, r sub b minus r sub a is the same as r sub b plus the negative of r sub a. So if we go to the tip of r sub b, and then we add to that, the negative of r sub a, which is simply r sub a flipped over in the other direction. Let me use a different color for that. So you can see that this here will become the negative of r sub a. And then if we add these two vectors together, r sub b plus the negative r sub a, then we get this vector right here, which is the vector r, which is equal to r sub b plus the negative of r sub a. So that's where that comes from. And then notice that this vector is exactly the same as that vector. It's the vector that defines the distance and direction from the charge to the point in space that we're interested in finding the electric field for. Then to find the electric field, we know the electric field is equal to k times q over r squared in the r direction. So notice we have a small unit vector r right there. And then we can also say that k can be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught where epsilon sub naught is the permittivity of free space. So essentially, we can make the substitution. And knowing that the permittivity of free space is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 Coulomb squared divided by Newton meter squared. Now, the reason why I like k better, it's a lot easier to write k than 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, but a lot of books and a lot of authors will use this instead of that. Now, notice that if you plug this into your calculator, you get k to be equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. And I typically round it off to k equals 9 times 10 to the 9th. Notice how, how the numbers make it really easy and who cares about the 0.01 um, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. That's basically the noise. So I really like to use this instead of using this but lots of books, lots of authors, and even lots of professors end up using the 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub so I just, I just don't know why they like that better. This is so simpler, I think. But anyway, whichever method you use, this is the way you want to represent electric field in vector format, where r is simply the distance from the charge to the point in space where you want to find the electric field. If there scores multiple charges, then you'll use the superposition principle where you calculate the electric field from each charge and simply add it up. But you have to add it up victorially, otherwise you don't get the right answer. And that is how it's done.